Have you always been confused about the differences between cryptocurrency broker and a cryptocurrency exchange? Well, this video is for you. If you are new to this channel, we talk about these products which are making the difference in the cryptocurrency space. In this video, we are going to talk with Bisher, who is the head of sales and brokerage at Stormrake. We have partnered with Stormrake to talk about cryptocurrency brokerage and what are the benefits of having that as a product and giving the value to the customers. So especially if you are in Australia, this video will be very useful for you if you are using multiple exchanges and you want to take the best out of your cryptocurrency value. So without wasting any time, let's get right into it. Before going ahead, please make sure that you don't take any content in this video as financial advice. If you need any financial advice, go to your financial advisor because this is just a conversation with the head of sales of a cryptocurrency brokerage company and we are just talking about what are the things that you need to be aware of while getting into these products so make sure that you use the link in the description which is for crypto clarity subscribers only and it will give you a discount on the fees that is being charged for you on these platforms hey bisha thanks for joining crypto clarity how are you doing mate i'm doing well my friend good to be here Good to be here. Yeah, it's been a while we've been planning this and um, it's good to, you know, finally get uh, each other in this Zoom meeting. Obviously, you're in Melbourne, but uh, this is a nice way to, you know, start off uh, introduction about you and Stromrick and how you are in this space, you know. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So, look, a little bit about myself. I started in uh, financial services going back a decade now, but I started in foreign exchange. Uh, yeah. trading FX and, and CFDs. For about three years, I was just donating money to the market. I'd open an account, get liquidated, open an yeah. account, get liquidated. And I was like, after three years of losing money, I was like, okay, I need to figure out how I can be successful. I need to work in the industry. So yeah. I was like 21, 22 at the time. And I uh, got a role uh, at a trading firm uh, as, a, as a sales trader. And I yeah. was like, I'm going to understand why I was losing money as on the other side, which is on the trading side by being on the sell side and actually yeah. understand these products and instruments really intimately. And so I did that for about five years, got a really good understanding of how markets work, uh, which was a, a real godsend. Yeah. But in that time, I was like still actively trading my own accounts and my own portfolio. And so I wanted to find new ways, new edge, new products that I could trade. And I was on some FX forums looking at like the Mexican peso and Russian ruble pairings and some new opportunities, right? Yeah. But Bitcoin kept coming up in this forum. And I was like, what is this Bitcoin thing? I don't understand it. This is going back to like 2015, 2016. And so yeah. I, I did a little bit of digging. I'm like, oh, the volatility is great. I can definitely trade this. I started trading it and then I fell in love with the asset class. I was like, this is this is bigger than just a trading opportunity. This is a this is a whole new macro. industry. It's a whole yeah. new macro picture. I was like, I'm gonna dump into it, and went really whole hog in uh, 2016, 2017. Um, when I really got bullish was probably local top of 2017. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, it's that's everyone. Everyone's yeah. starting point when they you know they got bullish and then the market crashed on them. <laughs> I know. I was I was putting in little bits of, at a time yeah. in 2016, and I was like, and I was seeing some gains. And then yeah. when 2017 came around, I put in some pretty sizable allocations when it was like sub 3k, 5k early yeah. 2017. And then yeah, just kept allocating, kept allocating, and um, yeah, when we got to the local top, I didn't really feel um, like even though we had a massive correction, I didn't yeah. feel like. I was in a bad position, like on paper, yes, I was on some you know, unrealized losses, but I was like, there's something more to this. So I just kept investing into the space with my exactly. time, my energy. And then we worked in, I was like, okay, same position that I was in when I wanted to understand FX a lot better. I decided to find a job in crypto, right? I was like, yep. the best way to learn is to be in the industry. In the industry and so. Yeah. And, and so I transitioned into uh, the crypto industry as a broker, brought my, my, my clients with me into the crypto space, and they've nice. been very grateful ever since. And that was what I did when back what, 2019, 2020, when I made that transition. Um, okay. And so the next, the next four or five years of my career has been pretty much in crypto. So the first five was in crypto, uh, FX, the next FX, five yeah. has, been in, has it been in crypto. And then... Um, I came across Stormrake in 2022. The guys have already been trading as a firm since 2015 because the first four years of Stormrake's history, 
was as an arbitrage trading desk. They were mm. running uh, trading systems because the arbitrage opportunity in crypto back in the day was massive, right? Massive, yeah. You could literally you could just go buy it from an American exchange. One exchange, yeah. And sell it on a Korean on a Korean one for like a 20, 30 percent premium, Great just premium. like that. Yeah. Easy, easy home run trades, right? <laughs> uh, but as as the edge in the arbitrage continued to diminish as more and more players yeah. came in and kind of smoothed out, the guys had repurposed their arb uh, arbitrage trading engine into a broker engine because what it did is we were plugged into 30 different exchanges and yeah. we were streaming prices from all of them to hunt out new arbitrage opportunities. But what it did, it was actually allowed us to identify great low prices from prices the buy side well. yeah. and, and higher prices on the sell side. And so when we opened it up as a broker engine, uh, as, a, as a way for clients to trade with in 2019, we decided to provide them a simple on-ramp service and off-ramp yeah. where they can just simply give us a call, send us an email, and we'll do the trade as well. We never opened up the trading engine to the public because yeah. one, it's a bit too complicated for the average user to make sense of. And two, we just want to be able to provide a really simple service for people to get into the space and have allocations towards Bitcoin and crypto. Um, and so that's what they did in 2019. They repurposed the business and repurposed the trading engine. Uh, they ran for a number of years, building up the processes and the product. I came in in 22, and we've just been on a, on a bit of a tear uh, yeah. because we've got really, really Alre you already, Yeah, you already had that product, which was the algorithm, and you basically converted it to something that you can, you know, give to your clients. And that's an amazing thing too, right? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, pretty much my history and Stormrex history is very similar um, yeah. in the sense that we started out in like not being client facing in the crypto world. Uh, I was in FX. They were just running trading systems uh, yeah. on the stat hub side. And then we repositioned as crypto brokers and we haven't looked back since. That's amazing. And I can see your experience in, FX and you know uh, that's the, basically the web two old finance world and this is the web Correct. three which is the future. So, um, from someone who is in that space, what's you know the biggest difference that you see in that space uh, from both side of you know the story? Yeah, so the biggest difference is that the crypto markets are far more liquid. They're a, a far better trading product, right? It, with FX, you'd have a lot of fragmented liquidity where you'd be trading against the broker that you're setting up with, right? Yeah. And even though the FX market is is multi-trillion dollar asset class and on, on a whole, it's quite liquid, but you, you still have retail spreads where you can park a bus through them. Whereas crypto spreads are, are really quite tight, right? Mm. Uh, for all intents and purposes. But, yeah. you know, when you bring in... Um, crypto brokers like ourselves, the spreads even become better because we're actually able to scan across uh, 6,000 different order yes. books yeah. and, and be able to find it. So the spread issue no longer uh, exists. So we kind of find that there's a way to aggregate liquidity there. Um, and I'd also say that there's a great deal more transparency in the crypto markets than there is in the FX markets. So even on, let's say, a popular FX trading platform like MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5, uh, you don't actually get to see things like an order book or a depth of market that exactly. doesn't exist, right? It just doesn't exist. Whereas you've got agar.trade, you've got really deep liquidity, deep uh, transparency as well across the entire ecosystem. All the analytics got, there. On-chain analytics through crypto quant or uh, what's the other one? Co Coin Glass is another good yeah. one, uh, another tool that we use. So there's a lot of ways to actually see what's going on on-chain and on the exchanges to help you as an investor make informed decisions. Uh, that level of transparency doesn't exist in TradFi and certainly yeah. doesn't exist in FX markets. Um, you, and, and that's why I'm so bullish on it. I'm like, if you can get 24-7 Liquidity, twenty four seven transparency. transparency. This is yeah. an asset class that's just going to that doesn't sleep. Right. And also, it's you know across borders. It doesn't stop from one you know jurisdictions and other, but it's there for everyone. Hundred percent, exactly. We want people to come into this asset class and be able to experience what it's like. Not just invest in it. Investing is great. That's yeah. what you should be starting with. But actually, use the product, use the asset class. Exactly. Um, you know, whether you're you're sending funds across borders or whatever it is, transferring funds, um, 
doing a bit of DeFi. DeFi like, there's yeah. so much to so much to actually do. But I always say before you kind of go and do all the creative fun stuff that you've got in crypto, just start with a really steady foundation. Simple. But simple, buy your Bitcoin, allocate, sit on it, and then you can learn and build learn about the markets yeah that's basically what i you know tell on crypto clarity to people that you should have that straight strategy that is you know simple and doesn't overwhelm you when you're starting because a lot of people come into this space and they think that okay i'm gonna make million dollars overnight and then you know i'm done and if they don't do yeah. it that's you know where the crypto is scam thing comes in yeah that's right and that's, that's right. always happened with anything you know it especially with crypto it's so really fast moving space so uh, it's understandable that people have that mindset once they get, you know, that overwhelming <laughs> need to do things and trading. But if someone like you is, you know, helping out people in this uh, space, then it's becoming really easier for people, especially when they're onboarded to that, um, you know, environment right now. Absolutely. Like, as I always say this to my clients, like if you can send an email, you can invest in crypto because that's how easy we make it, right? Mm. If you can't send an email, there's other issues that we have to deal with, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but but uh, no, uh, all jokes aside, it's really simple. Give me, give me a call, send me an email, you're in the market, right? And let's just start with what what is the king, right? I think a lot of people look at Bitcoin's price, you know, it's around uh, 100K Aussie at the moment, around 66K yep. US. They think, oh, it's already ran. Let me... Let me do something else. Let me look at yeah. uh, Solana or Tongcoin or Hadara and, and Rune. Like these are all great projects and we'll yeah. talk about them, I hope, at some point. Um, yeah. But you don't you don't want to start by branching out the risk curve. You don't want to start by just thinking, oh, this, this Bitcoin trade is already ran. I'm yeah. going to go into something that's cheaper. There's exactly. a reason why you need to start with Bitcoin because even though today it's 100K Aussie, it, it's inevitable that at some point in its history, it'll hit a million dollars Aussie exactly. because government debt and all other geopolitical factors and macro factors that will contribute to continued currency devaluation. Bitcoin is one of the surest bets that you can have as a hedge on that, as well yep. as being able to have a non-correlated asset to be able to provide you returns because you know, for its entire history, it's only had very brief moments of correlation with traditional assets, yeah. uh, whether that be like the US 500 or the NASDAQ. NASDAQ but for the yeah. most part, it's been quite uncorrelated. So whether you're holding a portfolio of equities, precious metals, property, you you definitely want to have a digital asset, this, life, yeah. you know, in that pie. And this uh, is the it's, most it's asymmetric Bitcoin. in that, you know, pool of things, if you want to make it like that. Yes, absolutely. Like a 1% or 2% allocation in your portfolio isn't going to add that much risk, right? Yeah. Uh, relative to the overall pie, but the, the upside and the performance that you can have from having mm. that allocation does really well. Like the traditional 60-40 split of 60% stocks and 40% bonds has been absolutely eviscerated over the last three years. Exactly. And what people have been doing is all of that, what used to be bonds, it's going to be coming into things like uh, property, precious metals, and now digital assets. Real and we're still assets. such a still such a small, small market because globally, I think that we're still around. What is it here? Let me just double check. I think two and a half trillion right now. Yeah, two point five three trillion at the moment is the entire crypto market cap. Yeah. Right, everything, Bitcoin, yeah. stable coins, everything. Right, that's a tiny that's, number. That's, infinitesimally small right when you compare it to say something like apple which has yeah. a larger market cap than all of crypto combined crypto industry yeah. right so there's still so much upside left so you don't really need to go all the way out the risk curve in the crypto space to have a decent allocation start with your bitcoin yeah. let that do the heavy lifting for you and then once you get comfortable with the space then you can branch out and try some new assets Exactly. And that's the reason, you know, a lot of people, uh, I think, understand this as a space where they can start, like you can put like 100 bucks in, um, you know, Bitcoin, and then you will be able to start. But in other asset classes, you're not able to do that. And that's the reason, you know, uh, I also got into it because it, the barrier of entry was so low. And it was easier for me to bring, you know, assets into that rather than build it in the traditional finance space. Correct. You know, you don't have to have all that much capital to start with. Even a fifty dollar 
purchase and then holding it in like a, a software wallet or like a yeah. Exodus or an Atomic gets you going. And that's understanding that's cool. the technology. Exactly. You know, and I think uh, this is something that I heard about the other day. And so it's not my quote. I just have to be very clear on that. But the average person doesn't know how this phone this iPhone works, right? All the chips, exactly. all that. I, I, I certainly don't, but they use it. The basic and the most average individual doesn't know how a combustion engine works, yet they use a car the every cars. day. Yeah. Right? All of that kind of stuff. So the technology now, when I speak to a lot of people, like I just simply don't understand Bitcoin or I don't understand blockchain. I'm like, you don't need to understand you it. Don't need all, to. You need to, all you need to know is that it works, right? That's all you need to know. Every 10 exactly. minutes, there's a new block right on average and so yep. that's what you need to what you need to know and then how to participate in it how to engage in it that's when you use crypto clarity that's when you use stormrake you learn through through crypto clarity you put on your position through stormrake and then you win yep. exactly and that's the reason you know a lot of uh, things that come in this space are uh, related to what we are you know talking about here and um, i want to learn about a few things as well you know like the coins that we were talking about and how you are trading that in the market cycle. What are your thoughts about the current market and, you know, um, what's going on right now in this space? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So right now we've, we've obviously seen the Bitcoin halving. Um, I saw you had a great video on that as well. So thank you for pushing that out there. People yeah. can learn from you. Um, look, it's been a bit lackluster, but that's not to be uh, unexpected because in the yep. last three ha post halvings, the month following the actual halving occurring, I think we had like an average return of like 3% the month after yep. uh, the Bitcoin halving. It took a lot of time, about 12 months, for the reduction in new supply to work its way into the market. And that's what we're seeing here now. I think yep. that it's a great time to just be dollar cost averaging and putting in some new allocations as we speak, right? Um, as you come along, you build up your exposure and you you grow from there. So I think August, September is we're going to see things really tick off and, and yep. head to another level. Um, right now, I'm, I'm really just bullish on the blue chips like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think yep. that that's what I want to be able to have in terms of like 80%, 70% of my portfolio is BTC and ETH. I think yep. Ethereum has been quite unloved this cycle so far. Yeah, and a, it has been. a lot of people are disregarding it and it's like this is the death of ethereum blah, yeah. blah. whenever people get that pessimistic about an asset that's probably the time where the most upside comes exactly. through because no one's looking at it all the attention has been on solana and things like that um but i would say you know btc and eth is where a, a good chunk of my exposure sits and then there's about four or five layer ones alternative layer ones yeah. that i think are a really nice way to add some risk into the portfolio without having to go into like um, you know, top 1,000 coins, yeah, and coins exactly. and stuff like that. So the low market are, gaps, really low market gaps here yeah, instead of that. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm really bullish on is Toncoin. I think that they can get access to a billion Telegram users. Whether that actually works out or not is another story. Yeah. But Toncoin is big on that. Um, I would say Phantom is the next one. FTM uh, was really popular in the last cycle. Last Andrew cycle. Konya walked away, but then he kind of came back recently, which is great. FTM, yeah. I'm quite bullish on. Um, Hadara is another uh, layer one that I think is going to do quite well this cycle. Yeah. Um, it's been around for a while, and because of this new push on the RWAs, uh, Hadara will do quite well. Yeah, I've been exactly. talking about yeah. that um, on my channel as well because it's a real world asset token, and that's where you know a lot of liquidity will come from. Yeah, hundred percent. Have so many partnerships. Um, Absolutely. And they're going to continue to win. Thorchain is yeah. another alt layer one that I'm quite bullish on. Um, I've been talking about this for a little while now. It yeah. allows Which one is it? Thorchain. Thorchain, oh, yep. Uh, yeah. Cross-chain cross -chain swaps. Um, they've recently opened up a lending market and a borrow market on their uh, platform or, or on their layer one. So that's really okay. exciting because, you know, you're getting to be able to earn native Bitcoin yield. Yes, there's yep. risk associated with it because you're facing the protocol and all kinds of things. It's not yeah. a risk-free uh, trade. There is still risk associated with earning that yield, but at least you're knowing the risks. It's not being yeah. promoted as like a as a risk free Bitcoin yield, um, which is always a bit of a danger zone. And then the the final asset that I think is worth um, putting just a little bit towards is probably Solana. Right? It's just that uh, the the most recent network effect. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And it it'll probably last 
another a few cycles it's it's gotten to that size now where it's going to continue to exist in one way shape or form yeah. so i still think that ethereum will be a, a nice outperformer but if you look at the soul eth chart i'll just bring that up here on my end and i'll just talk about it rather than yeah. you know, sharing my screen um soul eth has been one of a one of the best trades of this cycle and i think that if you look at it now um you you see that it's kind of come up to a recent high point um i would be i'd be that's why i'm more bullish on ethereum than i am solana right now because yep. it's just been so beaten up but playing that chart that soul eth chart i've been having clients doing that with me where they started off with solana they've yeah. now ran up really hard and now we're going to rotate that to ethereum and they're going to partake in the upside that ethereum has so even just playing those two coins against each other yeah. rather than looking at it as like a fiat pairing where it's sole usd sole aud you look at it yeah. as solely that's a really good way to accelerate your gains without having even to worry about the the dollar gains at the bottom of it like yes that matters right the, yeah. your dollar p l uh but if you're playing that kind of pairing there's a lot more upside uh to partake in as well exactly and i think that's where you know these uh understanding of the markets and the charts especially you know you're coming from that uh trading background that helps a lot i talk about the fundamentals a lot but i also try to bring in the uh, charts part of the thing so that people can correlate uh, you know what is going on and how you can compare things from everything and obviously there there is everything related uh, to you know crypto in the charts and Ooh. that's that's where the nerds in everyone goes in um, <laughs> that's right yeah so what are your thoughts about you know the market going forward after this basically bull run people are saying this will be after 2025 or uh, late 2025 so what are your thoughts on the market then you know re relatively from now yeah like i think that anything long term once we start going outside the next six to 12 months i only focus on bitcoin right there's yeah. some local narratives that are really hot there'll be some in a bull run there's always um, things that are getting really excited, but, uh, you know, AI means real world assets, yeah. social, social, social fire has been really hot lately. Gaming, yeah. that's all very nice and good. However, um, we need to be able to focus on anything longer than a 12 month horizon. Just focus on BTC, right? Yeah. That's the best, best way to kind of just approach the market is just purely focus on Bitcoin. Um, on any time horizon longer than 12 months, 18 yeah. months, this asset class is so young and it's it's still maturing that exactly. any time I look at a prediction two months, uh, sorry, uh, longer than 12 months or two years, anybody who's talking about where crypto will be or where their favorite alt layer one will be two years from now, it's just pure speculation. Exactly. You don't actually have any sort of strong enough data, data to draw yeah. a really, really good conclusion or at least a concise enough conclusion. Whereas with Bitcoin, I'm like, okay, at the local top, which I think is going to be around 6 trillion uh, total crypto market cap. So I'm still yeah. expecting it to, to double from here, thereabouts. Um, yeah. So we'll see BTC around 140, even maybe 150 if it goes for a bit of a stretch. Yeah. We rotate all of the, all the alt layer one gains, all the Ethereum gains into Bitcoin or stables. And just sit tight. Sit so, tight on that. I think, yeah, that's the way I see it. So that I'm always really cognizant of the fact that we provide a really simple service. So people mm. can buy by sending us an email. They can swap around the Soul ETH chart by just simply giving me a call. Say, hey, get rid of my Soul. Get me into Ethereum. Job's yeah. done, right? And we can also cash them out just as easily. So because the service is so simple, we are always cognizant to not have people over trading. Right, yeah. because or you can literally wake up, place an email, uh, put, give us a call, place an order, and you're mm. in the market. Right, it's as easy as that. But exactly. we want people to make mindful allocations and just try to sit sit with it because you can create with Stormrake, for example, multiple accounts, and one account could be your investment account, which is pretty much your BTC buy and hold. You can yeah. create another another account with us uh, under the same email address and phone number. And that could be a trading account trading. Which run with like 10K and that's a little bit more active. Um, but I always encourage people to just be as conservative as possible when it comes to the crypto space because there's yeah. already enough risk and volatility, even exactly. in Bitcoin and Ethereum, to reward you, right? And that's what I'm always saying to people is like, stay, stay smart, stay calm because the rewards and the gains will come with enough exactly. time. 
you just got to navigate the waters and not lose it to things like a Celsius or block buy or exactly. FTX. Just keep your shirt focus, on. Focus on the long term and, you know, hold your uh, crypto for yourself rather than, you know, giving it to someone. It's a Correct. D- DeFi is basically that uh, risk curve that we were talking about here for people who don't know because yeah, FTX, Celsius, all that happened in the last bull market and uh, that's what, you know, got us down to that l- lows of, you know, uh, 15 to 18,000 Bitcoin, was it? And I think yeah. that's, that's the reason people need to understand that it's still such a new class and even Bitcoin has like 10 to 15 years of history behind it and others are not even that much. So, you know, you need to understand that it's still risky, but start with Bitcoin is always the case. And yeah, that's what I tell to my friends, uh, people listening to Crypto Clarity all the time, that you have to understand the technology first, right? Yeah, that's right. Understand that you there is enough upside there. So my my whenever somebody comes to me who's quite new uh, or making their first time allocation, it's just purely buy Bitcoin, get started. Don't worry about, you know, getting into the weeds of what blockchain is, what DLT is, like all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. There is enough literature there for you to read and learn about over time. Yeah. Uh, but start with your Bitcoin. And then as you get more comfortable, you can look to self-custody. You can look at being able to jump on chain and do a few things. But mm. once you've got that foundation laid out, what you build on top of that is really good, right? But if you build on a shaky foundation um, yeah. by branching out the risk of buying memes and AI tokens, um, then you're you're always starting behind because yeah, you might be up two, three hundred percent quite quickly, but then yeah. you're down ninety percent the following week, and it's just exactly. like it's not it's not a game that a lot of people are going to do well in. Whereas anyone who comes in starts with Bitcoin over enough time, they've outperformed almost everyone. And even in exactly. the last twelve months, even in the last twelve months, Bitcoin yep. has outperformed eighty percent of the top one hundred coins that exactly. are in uh, by market cap. So. That, that kind of just goes to show you that even without having to take on a lot of risk, you could have done really well and outperformed most crypto participants by just holding Bitcoin. Exactly. And that's that's also where I started. You know, when I started last bull market, I was already into that space where, you know, people, Bitcoin has already run to its all time high and people are talking about it. And then you want to go to the risk curve. And that's yeah. where you, you know, uh, get wrecked, obviously. And it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, part of the game where you started and um, you obviously have that risk appetite. You think that, okay, I want to do this. I want to put 100 in this, 100 in that, or, you know, 1,000 in this, uh, and then get a lot of value out of it. But that doesn't work like that until, you know, um, you start simple with Bitcoin. And that's what I did last bear market as well. Like I started DCAing into Bitcoin. And I think, yeah, that's the best performing till now for me other than you know other altcoins in ai but this is uh still running out yeah exactly you nailed it my friend you know and it doesn't matter whether you start your dca at the top or yeah. at the bottom if you it's last enough DCA. cycles it's it, you'll you'll do well enough like i had one of and this is the beauty of our service as well like one of my best clients he came in at the bottom of the bear market and he was like yeah. ready to sell everything he gives me a call he's in a panic they said, get me out. I just, I don't want to sell everything. I yeah. said, we're right, we're right at the bottom, my friend, right? Here's what we'll do. Go and have some lunch. Go get yourself a bottle of water. If you give me a call back and you want to yep. still sell, of course, I'll oblige you. As your broker, I'm not here to tell you what you can and can't do. I'll execute at your request. He takes a breather, gets a feed in, and then he comes back and goes, it's okay. I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, I said, great choice. I'll leave it as it is. Three months later, he calls me back and he's like, I want to put in another half a million dollars because Bitcoin started to run from 16 to 22. And this was in the anticipation of the ETF approval. So yep. this guy is just absolutely minted now. Um, so it goes to show you that when you have a broker, you you work with somebody who's with you side by side, um, yeah. whether you're looking to buy, sell or swap, we can actually help you in making really sound decisions. We won't make those decisions on your behalf because mm. as your broker, I'm here to execute your requests, but you're not on your own. A lot exactly. of the times people feel a little bit overwhelmed, but I think that if they've got crypto clarity and storm rake in their corner, they're going to win. That's amazing. I think that's what people miss in this space where, you know, you, there is a lot of computing. There is always, you know, the exchanges out there, but no one there to help you. And I've seen in Facebook forums in uh, places like those where, People are talking about, you know, they have issues with the exchange, but no one is there to talk to them. And that's where, you know, customer service, which Stormrake provide, that comes into 
play and obviously you're doing a great job at it by the sounds of it because that's you hold, hold your client off from selling at the bottom so you know almost uh, made him you know uh, more money than he can do that after that Exactly. And so I think that um, you, you nailed it on the head there is that they're not on their own. They'll get a dedicated crypto broker that they can deal with. They can call our number. They can email trade at stormrank.com and they can have whatever they want done, whether they're looking to make a trade, make a withdrawal, um, ask some general questions. They have somebody who's real at the end of the day and they're not dealing with like these AI chatbots because with the rise of ChatGBT, everybody's got like this stellar chatbot now. Exactly. Uh, but the problem is, is that people are being more and more funneled into these automated um, customer service solutions, which is fine if you're trying to deal with hundreds of thousands of people, which yeah. is what we're not trying to do. We want to have a, a select handful of clients that really understand and love the service, come and want to work with us. And then they'll get a dedicated crypto broker the whole way through where you can actually speak and deal with people. And that's super important so that you're not on your own. Exactly. That's amazing. And also on that, I want to learn about your thoughts about the regulation part of this, uh, you know, asset class. What do you think about that? The things, the way that things are going right now, uh, we were also thinking about Ethereum ETF, but I think that's also being a bit shaky recently. Um, and, yeah. you know, worldwide in Australia, what are your thoughts about the regulation side? Yeah, look, regulation is going to come and, you know, one way or another. So we're not against regulation we just think it should be smart and well thought out rather than it just being regulation through enforcement which is what the us and the sec have been doing is that they're they're not wanting to touch it but then yep. if you if somebody does the wrong thing or doesn't have any clarity they'll come in and try to shut down their business which is not a really healthy way That's to regulate you don't, yeah. You don't, yeah you want to regulate by having everybody on the same real rule book, everybody's aware of what is and what isn't inappropriate um, yeah. to do. But look, Stormrake at the end of the day, we're DCE registered with Austrac. We know that regulation is here to come. Treasury yeah. right now is putting out consultation papers on uh, AFSL so they can be able to figure out what's happening with um, being able to put together an Australian financial services license for crypto providers. Yeah. Uh, and that as soon as that becomes material for us and we can approach it and apply it, well, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Love the background <laughs> effects. I'm not sure how I did that, but we'll see what happens. I know, that's amazing. <laughs> it's all part of the magic. <laughs> yeah. That's what um, I thought. Mo moving on, they... they thought about regulations and everything was very yeah. exciting so um the the driest part of the regulations is that we have to handle it uh exactly. the clients that the clients don't have to worry about it but whatever it takes to be a fully compliant and regulated business we will undertake so we've already got all the appropriate measures by being a registered australian business and registered with austrac if there is a requirement for an AFSL, which is looking likely over the next year or two, we'll definitely pursue that as well and continue to provide our brokerage services to our clients. So it, it is important to understand what's happening in uh, crypto regulations, but yeah. not so much on the individual client side because they don't need to know who uh, the, the regulatory requirements. All we exactly. need to know, or all that they need to know is that we are regulated and that's what matters. True. That's amazing. I think that solves a lot of the problems for people because people go there and think about it from that end. And, you know, it's um, always confusing for them thinking that, okay, this can be closed down. They think that market will crash because, you know, all this uh, regulation yeah. that this is such a big market right now. It's as we talked about it, it's two and a half trillion dollars and it's worldwide. It's not just, you know, one place that's happening at multiple places right. at, at the same time. So uh, that's really important to know, especially, you know, when you are regulated in a right way, you're doing the right thing, then your customers, clients won't have to worry about it. Exactly. And I think that a lot of people, you, you can't regulate blockchain like a traditional asset class can, right? You can't regulate Bitcoin the way you could regulate, for example, Apple shares or, or exactly. a company, right? Or a listed company. So what happens is that the regulation is on the service providers, which is what we are. Right, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily a bad thing. We welcome it. Exactly. Right. That's so the thing. they 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 regulate those who provide the access because that's where the most risk is. Because if you go into a dodgy exchange or a dodgy service provider, you could lose a hundred percent of your investment principal. Yeah. Um, and so as long as the on ramps and off ramps 
uh, regulated in the sense that clients won't lose their money, they can't get scammed, you know, all that kind of stuff is super important. Um, then we can go from there. But outside of that, there's no regulation that can fit Bitcoin into it. There's thousands of nodes. There's, you know, thousands of miners. There's uh, the, this, the participation across the network is, in, like you said, is not in any one place. Yeah. You can't regulate right exactly. so it's a global it's a global network right and that's what's super important and why i love this space so much is that you can never put it in a box yeah it's immutable <laughs> correct. correct and um on that you know i i listened to you about the custody side of things as well so what are your thoughts and what uh storm rake is doing in custodying the digital assets of their clients so how does that yeah. work so we do provide two options for clients after they make their investment allocation. So let's say you buy Bitcoin, you can either choose to withdraw that asset to your own cold storage, to your own wallet. And that's fine. Yeah. That's welcomed. Uh, we, we encourage self-custody. It's the best way to participate in Bitcoin is to actually self-custody Bitcoin yeah. itself. Uh, for those who are uncomfortable with that or not quite ready, because it might be something that they do six months down the track, we yeah. do have a custody solution available where clients can come in, simply hold their assets with us. And then when they look to sell or swap it, they can just give us a ring, say, hey, with that Bitcoin, cash it out for me, send it to my bank account. It's all good. Uh, or they can call us six months or 12 months down the track and say, with that Bitcoin you have on my from my custody, could you be able to send it to my wallet? And we'll send a small test transfer. They'll confirm it's received. Then we send the yeah. full balance. So even though we're transferring the assets to you, we take a great deal of care to make sure they end up in your possession. And then you have to maintain safe custody of your private keys and, and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Um, but that's how we work, right? So we give you freedom. We give you flexibility. We give you optionality. If it's too complicated to uh, self-custody, just custody with us. Yeah. If you learn how to do it six months down the track, then feel free to withdraw. Or if you're already good to go and you want to buy and withdraw, you can do that. There's yeah. no limitation on how you want to cut it up. So we encourage clients who are new to the space to use our custody solution whilst they're learning as to how to self-custody. And then once you've got that learning curve down pat, then you can go around and, and self-custody for yourself, no problems. I think that's a great way to give them you know, what they need. Obviously, there are different levels of um, experience in people who are joining the space or who have already known about it and doing it with others. So it's really important to give those options. And I think you're doing a great job that. Thank you. It means a lot. Nah, all good. So I will put the links in the description. Uh, people who want to start, you know, with Stormrig, they can join my referral link with Crypto Clarity. We have partnered together about, uh, you know, br bringing this service to people. Obviously, it is important. Um, there was a minimum for this, right? Uh, there was like a $2,000 minimum that people can start cool. with. Correct. Correct. So as a broker, uh, we're not quite an exchange. An exchange is great if you just want to play with a couple hundred bucks and withdraw it, That that's fine, right? Um, yeah. But for us, because we look after the whole life cycle of the trade, we look after the whole life cycle of the custody of the assets and the safe transfer of them. We do have a $2,000 minimum per transaction to yeah. ensure that our high service levels are maintained. So if we're being able to charge only usually we charge 3%, but Crypto Clarity gets 2% um, yeah. for the community. We've provided a 33% discount. Yeah. Um, so because we're only charging 2% uh, on the transaction fees, we need to make sure that our service levels are maintained. So that that's why the 2K minimum is in place. Exactly. And uh, that's important when, you know, people are requiring that service, which is, you know, uh, really individualistic and, you know, giving them a sense of uh, belonging to a place, right? 100%, 100%. We don't want them to be on their own. They just simply partner with us, trade with our minimum, and then they're all good to go. But the good thing about us is that there's no maximum. So a lot of other exchanges and a lot of other places, they enforce a deposit minimum or yeah. in, in some cases they enforce a withdrawal uh, maximum as well, where yeah. you can only withdraw, say, up to 10K per day, for example. Whereas oh. that's not the case with us. You can deposit a million dollars swap that into Bitcoin, withdraw that into your own self-custody all within the same day. Um, okay. This is a service that's not provided um, anywhere else, not to my knowledge at least, um, and not with the 
level of care and professionalism that we provide. So exchanges are great for being able to put you on your initial exposure or maybe learn how to play around in the ecosystem because exchanges are a necessary service. They're not, they're not exactly. a, a, a bad service provider, but for people who are looking to make genuine allocations in the space, a broker is a better way to go about it. Exactly. Okay. That's amazing to know. And I think we will continue, you know, building on this relationship that we have started with Crypto Clarity and Stormrick and obviously bring value to people, especially learning from you about, you know, this side of thing where uh, they don't get to see the cryptocurrency broker in person. Uh, they're always <laughs> thinking that they're talking to a bot. So this is important yeah. for people to know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and we'll do much more uh, events as we go along. So we'll let you guys know Crypto Clarity will have um, the ability to join us for our live events as well. And we hope to see you there and your community there as well. Exactly. And we'll, you know, uh, keep on giving this uh, valuable content to people who are uh, starting out in this space, especially people in Australia who think that, you know, they are uh, left alone in this space because it's a uh, uh, isolated um, space, especially, uh, and we are so far away from countries like US and everywhere. So it's important to have that community and belonging for people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give us a call. You know, even if yeah. you don't want to open an account or you've got questions, you can use, um, you know, Crypto Clarity sign up link in the description and get started right away. But if you've yeah. got questions beforehand, give, give our number on the website a call, ask us some, some great questions and we'd be happy to serve you prior to even opening your account. Amazing. That's great value. Thanks for coming on to Crypto Clarity, Victor. We'll talk soon then. Yes, we will. Take care, gentlemen. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye.